dear guests, the acting chair of the National Endowment for the Arts, and Eilers. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the 205th meeting of the National Council on the Arts is now in session. I'm Ann Eilers, acting chair. I'm fair skinned. I have shoulder length brown hair. I'm wearing a white shirt with a charcoal jacket. And I'm sitting in front of a white background with an NEA logo. Um, welcome members of the National Council, arts leaders and allies, NEA staff, and members of the public. For the record, our, NSA, our NCA members joining us today are violinist and music educator, Aaron Dorkin from Ann Arbor, Michigan, performer and songwriter, Lee Greenwood from Nashville, Tennessee, attorney musician and former member of Congress, Paul Hodes from Kittery, Maine, urban planning and community policy specialist, Maria Rosario Jackson from Los Angeles, California and Phoenix, Arizona, Music professor and arts administrator, Emil Kang from New York, New York. Patron and trustee, Charlotte Kessler from Columbus, Ohio. Arts administrator, Maria Lopez de Leon from San Antonio, Texas. Um, organic farmer and author, Mas Masamoto from Delray, California. Visual artist, Barbara Ernst Prey from Oyster Bay, New York. Dancer, choreographer and teacher, Rane Ramaswani from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and film industry executive Tom Rothman from Los Angeles, California. As many of you have heard, um, council member Dr. Maria Rosario Jackson has been nominated to serve as the next chair of the NEA. Recently, Dr. Jackson's nomination was approved by the Senate Health Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, and her nomination is now waiting for a final vote from the full Senate. And um, Dr. Jackson, did you want to share a few words today? Uh, sure. Good morning. Um, I'm, I'm feeling very excited and uh, grateful uh, to be in this process and, uh, and grateful for your continued leadership um, for the, the stewardship of the team that's been working with me at the NEA through this process. It's, uh, they have been invaluable, um, wonderful people. Um, as for today, I'm delighted to be with my fellow council, council members for this special meeting. Uh, I feel so um, indebted to, grateful for, in admiration of the NEA staff. Uh, for doing this Herculean work uh, in addition to their regular duties um, to meet the needs of, of our field. Uh, and I'm inspired by, by the colleagues across the country who continue to serve through the arts, even in very difficult times. So it's good to be with you. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. We look forward to welcoming you. Um, for those newer to our agency, the National Endowment for the Arts or NEA is an independent federal agency that funds, promotes and strengthens the creative capacity of communities by providing Americans with diverse opportunities for arts participation. And NEA's core belief is that the arts are an essential component of everyday lives. And our vision is of a nation in which every American benefits from arts engagement and every community recognizes and celebrates its aspirations and achievements through the arts. Our primary activities include grant making to cultural groups, nonprofit arts organization and public arts agencies. At our last um, October meeting, I shared statistics on how the arts and cultural sector contribute significantly to our nation's economy in the way of jobs and gross domestic product. Today, I'm gonna to share two interesting did you know anecdotes about the NEA. So first, um, did you know the NEA provided crucial funding at pivotal moments in initial histories in the American Film Institute, Steppenwolf Theater Company, Spoleto Festival USA, Sundance Institute, and Jazz at the Lincoln Center? And then second, um, did you know NEA's own arena stage received a 1967 NEA grant to support development of Howard Sackler's The Great White Hope? This went on to be a huge hit on Broadway and a major motion picture starring James Earl Jones, who later became an NCA, NCA member, 
and um, star Jane Alexander, who later became um, an NEA chair. So now you know. <laughs> um, next, moving to um, staff appreciation and recognition, um, we've acknowledged it's been a really challenging time for, for everyone, including our NEA team. And during the pandemic, the NEA staff has considered historic numbers of grants. And so today we're taking time to thank the staff in its entirety, and also a number who were recognized recently with a Distinguished Service Award, which is NEA's highest award for exceptional service. And so um, first individual awards went to Cliff Archuleta and um, Carolyn Coons from the Office of Public Affairs, Daniel Fishman from the Office of General Counsel, Tracy Hall and Meg Cowlick from Grants Management Office, um, Brandy Ridgeway from Human Resources, and from Programs and Partnerships, Jennifer Eskin, Alexandria Fogel, Lara Holman, M Rachel McKeon, Cliff Murphy, Anya uh, Neforiak, Mo Sharif, Jenny Terman, and David Travis. Our team awards went to Aaron McKenna, Bonnie Nichols, and Patricia Schaefer, all from the Office of Research and Analysis, to Christine Gant and Girmar Ocha from Events and International Offices, Wida Maydell, Ian Julian Williams um, from PNP Theater Office, and Nicole Mieta and Heidi Wren from the DCMB Finance Office. Um, congratulations to these award winners and then a collective thank you to the entire NEA staff for all of the heavy lifting this year. I'm also recognizing um, three upcoming retirements to long term long standing um, NEA team members. And so Victoria Hutter, um, Assistant Director of Public Affairs, Andy Mathis, State and Regional Specialist and Joe Smith, an IT, our IT specialist. Thank you so much, Victoria, Andy, and Joe for your invaluable contributions to your teams, the agency, and the arts and cultural field. And I know many both inside and outside of the agency will miss daily interactions with you. And we wish you well as you start your new retirement adventures. Um, Recent events, just to highlight a few of these, um, there are two events um, that took place since we last met. And with our partners at the International Federation of Arts Councils and Cultural Agency, or IFACA, the NEA successfully hosted the America's Cultural Summit. And the summit brought leaders from cultural agencies across Americas together for discussions focusing on um, moving towards a sustainable, equitable, and inclusive future. So joining the NEA for these sessions were government leaders, um, Interior Secretary Deb Haaland, and also artists like um, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Then later in November, the agency celebrated its 2021 National Heritage Fellows featuring nine awardees. And the tribute event was held virtually and it was hosted by actor Jimmy Smits. And I, for one, am always inspired by these um, artistic masters. And so the video is available on arts.gov, but here's a brief trailer to um, whet your appetite. If you don't look back, then how can you move forward? Es lo que uno lleva dentro desde que nace. But this music is very special in these parts. That thread that ties you to the past. As soon as I heard it, oh my God, that was it. <laughs> we tapped into something that we'd never experienced before. It's a universal thing. When you true to it, it's true to you.
Yay. <laughs> so it, it, it's an excellent production. I encourage everybody to um, watch it. Um, next, we're going to move to our regular business. Um, I'm continuing. Um, so is OK, minutes. Is, is there a, a motion to approve the minutes of the October council meeting? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you all so much. Um, now, um, an American Rescue Program update. Um, as we all know, the American Rescue Plan, or ARP, was signed into law by President Biden this past spring, and it provides $135 million to the NEA to support the arts sector as it recovers from the devastating impact of COVID-19. And earlier this year, the NEA provided 52 million in funding to for 62 states and jurisdictional arts agency and regional arts organizations. And at our October meeting, the council recommended over 20 million in art funding for local arts agencies to award. So today the council will be considering ARP grants that will directly fund organizations. And I'm pleased to introduce Ayana Hudson, Acting um, Deputy Chair for Programs and Partnerships, who will lead the council members through voting on the recommendations. Ayana? Thank you, Anne. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm an African-American female with long black hair. I'm wearing glasses and a black turtleneck sweater. I'm sitting in front of a white background with the NEA logo in the upper right-hand corner above my shoulder. Council members, we will proceed with the application review section of the agenda. The tally of votes will be announced at the end of today's session. The council will be voting by ballot today on award recommendations to only $57.8 million in one funding area, the American Rescue Plan grants to organizations. These funding recommendations are found in the council book. For your vote to be tallied, you must be present on the call at the time of the motion, discussion, and vote. Council members, you must email your votes to Kim Jefferson in this category immediately at the conclusion of this part of the meeting. Council members' affiliations are recorded in the council book and later will be attached to your ballots, and each member has been provided an opportunity to update this information prior to the meeting. Council members are recorded as not voting on applications with which they are affiliated. This list becomes part of the agency's official record. After a brief summary of the ARP funding category, council members will have an opportunity to ask questions and or discuss the recommendations before voting by ballot. May I have a motion to consider the recommended grants and rejections under the American Rescue Plan? Grants so moved. It's in the council book. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Now we'll summarize the category in which you will be voting and then pause for any recommendations or questions from council members. The American Rescue Plan was conceived to fuel the nation's recovery from the devastating economic and health effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The funds allocated to the National Endowment for the Arts represent a significant commitment to the arts and a recognition of the value of the cultural sector to the nation's economy and recovery. Seeking to make a positive impact on a broad constituency, the Arts Endowment encouraged ARP applications from a variety of eligible organizations, including organizations that serve populations that are underserved, such as those whose opportunities to experience the arts are limited by ethnicity, economics, geography, or disability, organizations with small and medium-sized budgets, organizations from rural and urban communities, organizations that may be applying for federal support through the Arts Endowment for the first time. The American Rescue Plan Grants to Organizations Program received more than 7,500 eligible applications. 506 applications are recommended for $57.8 million. Recommended funding in all 50 states, as well as Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Washington, DC, will fund the preservation of jobs, facility support, costs associated with health and safety supplies and marketing and promotion. Are there any questions or comments from the council? If not, please mark your ballot. 
Council members, you may now email your votes to Kim Jefferson. Thank you, and I'll now turn it over to Rod Joy, Chief of Staff at the NEA. Thank you, Ayana, and hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Rod Joy, and I serve as Chief of Staff at the National Endowment for the Arts. I'm so grateful to be here on this day of action and reflection for the National Council uh, on the Arts. I'm a middle-aged man with curly black hair. I'm wearing a white button-up shirt and a blue sport coat. I'm sitting in front of a black virtual background with the National Endowment for the Arts logo in the corner. As Ann Eilers and Ayana Hudson have made clear, today's special council meeting is all about response, recovery, and resilience. Next slide, please. Before I zoom in and talk a little bit more about the American Rescue Plan program, I wanna zoom out and say a word or two about NEA priorities. As a reminder, uh, there are four overarching fo focus areas that have guided the Arts Endowment's work over the past 11 months or so. The first is to rebuild the creative economy. And this is all about reversing the damage of COVID-19 and getting creative workers back to work. The second is healing the nation. And this is all about the power of art in all its forms to help us heal, comfort, and recover. The third is around a commitment to equity. And this is about centering the NEA's programs and operations around the guiding principles of equity and fairness. And the fourth, fourth focus area is around serving the field. And this is about operational excellence, and working with our partners to provide all Americans with diverse opportunities to experience and participate in the arts. Uh, next slide, please. As uh, Ann Eilers and Ayana Hudson have mentioned, uh, ARP is a catalytic in investment in the arts and a recognition of the value of culture and creative expression to our nation's economy and recovery efforts. We see the successful delivery of these federal funds as a shot in the arm for the arts sector and a much needed lifeline to help cultural organizations respond to and recover from this period of disruption and uncertainty. While the economy is rebounding and growing again, the arts sector is still getting back on its feet. Uh, next slide, please. One of the most important tasks we have right now at the Arts Endowment is to aid in the recovery of the arts and cultural sector. It's no secret that cultural institutions and creative professionals are feeling the continued pain and impact from this pandemic. Before COVID-19, the arts and cultural sector was approaching a $1 trillion industry that directly employed over 5.2 million Americans and indirectly supported millions more. Few sectors of our economy, if any, have been hit harder by COVID-19 than the arts. 54% of all nonprofit arts organizations reported losses in total revenue in 2020, compared with 36% of all other types of nonprofits. Next slide, please. The NEA's Rescue Plan program was designed to help keep the doors open to arts organizations nationwide and to assist the field in its recovery efforts. The NEA's Rescue Plan program has two overarching goals, and as you've heard, uh, it's being implemented in three phases or installments. The first goal of the NEA's ARP program is to help preserve jobs and support arts and cultural organizations in communities of all sizes. The second goal of the program was to expand access to funds to communities that have been historically underserved and underrepresented by government. Today's council meeting represents action on the third phase of the agency's rescue plan program. Phase one occurred in April of this year when the NEA awarded 40% of its ARP funds to 62 states, jurisdictional and regional arts agencies for regranting through their respective funding programs. Phase two was the focus of our last council meeting on October 28th, when the National Council on the Arts recommended 66 grants totaling over $20.2 million to local arts agencies for ARP subgranting in their communities. And phase three is the focus of our gathering today. 
we were pleased to present the council with a portfolio of recommended ARP applications totaling $57.8 million in direct support to nonprofit arts and cultural organizations. Uh, next slide, please. When you think about the sheer size and magnitude of the American Rescue Plan, the NEA staff team has done an amazing job managing all of the moving parts and implementing ARP with urgency, integrity, and tenacity. Funding for the NEA's Rescue Plan program in 2021 was 55% larger than the agency's CARES Act funds from 2020. The NEA staff team worked hard to incorporate lessons learned from the CARES Act process into ARP. They also worked hard to embed equity and access into, into the ARP design and implementation. We launched a robust public engagement and technical assistance campaign this summer to ensure the field was aware of ARP and to support organizations in applying to the NEA for the first time. By meeting people where they're at and creating new touch points for the individuals and communities we serve, the NEA received a historic number of ARP applications. Uh, next slide, please. State and regional partners. So in meeting people where they are, partnership is incredibly powerful. The NEA state and regional partners are doing their part to make sure the benefits of ARP are felt in real and meaningful ways. The Arts Endowment is working collaboratively with our nation's state and regional arts agencies to help revive and stabilize the arts and cultural field. All across the country, SAAs and RAOs are serving as essential facilitators of ARP funds. On the East Coast, uh, our RAO colleague, the New England Foundation for the Arts, has awarded $840,000 in resilience grants to 73 arts and cultural nonprofits. On the West Coast, the Western States Arts Federation has awarded $1.5 million to 44 arts and cultural organizations. At the state level, the Alabama State Council on the Arts awarded over $814,000 in federal relief funds to 63 cultural organizations. And in West Virginia, the Commission on the Arts will award a portion of $765,000 to artists who help communities heal and recover from the impact of the pandemic. Next slide, please. <clears throat> in partnership with the Arts Endowment's growing network of local arts agencies, ARP dollars are reaching big cities, small towns, rural areas, and tribal lands. The second phase of the NEA's Rescue Plan program represents a $20.2 million investment in the unique role that local arts agencies play in the U.S. arts ecosystem. Local arts agencies are vital partners to increasing public access to the arts, to supporting artists and arts organizations, and to enhancing the quality of life in their communities. Through local arts agencies, ARP is touching places all across America and strengthening the networks that animate people's everyday lives and enlivens our local communities. From Sacramento, California, to Reno, Nevada, to Madison, Wisconsin, we can't wait to see how ARP subgranting will help arts organizations and arts workers rebuild local economies and contribute to the well being of America's towns, cities, and neighborhoods. Next slide, please. Today, we recommended to the council a portfolio of ARP applications totaling $57.8 million in direct grants to 568 nonprofit arts and cultural organizations from across the country. The recommended applications are diverse by every measure. Artistic discipline, budget size, grant award amount requested, location, and geographic area. The recommended applications include multiple organizations from every state in the country. As you can see from this map, we're recommending ARP funding to nonprofit arts groups in all 50 states, Washington, DC, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Early analysis shows that over a quarter of the recommended organizations are new to NEA funding. Collectively, these recommended applications illustrate the detrimental impact of COVID-19 on arts institutions, telling stories of hardship, but also stories of survival. Next slide, please. 
the year ahead. Uh, while we're continuing to make progress, we know that we have a lot more work to do. As evidenced by the 700, or excuse me, 7,500 eligible ARP applications we received this past year, we know the financial needs of the arts and culture field far outweighs the available funds that we'll be awarding through ARP. In the weeks and months ahead, the NEA will continue to lean on and leverage its federal, state, and local partnerships to extend the reach of its programs and spread the word about its services. As we head into a new year, we will strive to continue to meet people where they're at and to improve the impact of our agency. Here's a quick rundown of some of the many engagement activities we have on tap in the new year. On January 20th, from 3 to 4 p.m., the NEA will host a Grants for Arts Projects webinar, or GAP for short. Uh, Grants for Arts Projects is the principal grants program for organizations based in the United States. This is an annual webinar that's geared towards refreshing returning applicants and giving new applicants an overview of the GAP program. On January 26, we'll have an interactive session focused on civil rights to help NEA grantees and applicants better understand and navigate the national civil rights laws and policies prohibiting discrimination. And on March 1st, the NEA will host a webinar on its Challenge America program. Uh, as many of you know, Challenge America is often described as an on-ramp to NEA funding as it offers support primarily to small organizations for projects in all artistic disciplines. Please be on the lookout for more information about these and other events, and please plan to join us if you can. Uh, in closing, uh, I wanna express my heartfelt thanks to the entire NEA staff team for the role that they played in processing and moving forward our American Rescue Plan program. Um, our acting chair often talks about how it takes a village to get things done at the agency. And that's an adage that is always top of mind. Um, we know it takes a village to get things done. And this work at the agency was carried out on top of the responsibilities for regular grant making. Uh, this demonstrates the staff's dedication to the agency, to the arts sector, and to the American people. And for that, I'm very grateful. With that, I'll turn it back over to our acting chair, Ann Ivers. Thank you all. Thank you, Ra. Um, as a final piece of business, I'm happy to announce all recommendations for the funding and rejection have passed. So good news. Um, also, before we adjourn, I want to recognize Ayana Hudson for her work as acting chair um, of programs and partnerships and really acknowledge um, her, all the work she has done this year. It's been a monumental. And this past um, week, she also received an even higher agency award. It's called the Special Act Award. And so thank you, Ayana, for everything that you have done. Um, it is such a pleasure to work with you and how fortunate our agency is to have you um, helping and overseeing and leading our programs and partnerships group. Um, I also um, want to thank um, our Elise, our ASL interpreter, and, and then um, I'll make a quick plug for everyone to follow the agency on social media platforms that are found on your screen. Um, on behalf of all of us at NEA, thank you for a productive meeting and thank you for um, all of our council members for your continued service. Um, I wish everyone a, a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. Our next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, March 20, 24th, 2022. And the 205th meeting of the National Council of the Arts is now adjourned. Thank you.